Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source. If your organization opposes critical race theory, watch out. The country's largest labor union will be looking into you. NTD's Allison Lee has the details. The country's largest teachers union, the National Education Association, or NEA, says it will research organizations that oppose educators doing what they call anti-racist work. That's a term often associated with ideas of critical race theory. The union announced the plan on the website for their 2021 annual meeting. They say after researching those organizations, they will publish a list of resources for state affiliates, local and individual educators. These educators can refer to the recommendations when they face opposition for teaching critical race theory. The NEA singles out DC think tank, the Heritage Foundation. Their website says the attacks on anti-racist teachers are increasing, coordinated by well-funded organizations such as the Heritage Foundation. We need to be better prepared to respond to these attacks so that our members can continue this important work. The NEA will spend over $56,000 in addition to their current budget on this project. It's not clear when they will publish their findings. The union currently boasts 3 million members. That makes them the largest labor union in the country. Allison Lee, NTD News. Illinois lawmakers passed a bill in May requiring K-12 public schools to teach comprehensive sex education. On July 1st, a group of parents rallied at the governor's mansion to voice their concerns. Community members rallied outside Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker's mansion to demand he veto Senate Bill 818. The rally's organizer tells NTT the sordid details of the bill. It's antithetical to the values that most parents have in the state of Illinois. They don't want their children being taught how to masturbate or how to experiment or how to put condoms on bananas or to, um, to, to get an abortion without parental consent. SB 818 requires all public schools to align teachings in grades K through 5 with national sex education standards. The standards require children in grades 3 through 5 to learn about content including explicit sexual acts, transsexual ideology, and hormone blockers. A great grandmother says the sex education in her age was more of a biology lesson. When I was in school that we did have an educational program like this, but it was a biology lesson. This was all about sexual intimacy. It wasn't about biology. The bill claims the teaching materials are age and developmentally appropriate. A mother of four thinks differently. We believe that it should be the parent's decision when their child is ready for that kind of information. I don't want my kids who are too young to comprehend things that are that abstract and complicated to have it presented to them by somebody other than me. That's my job. A school board member says that some teachers fear peer pressure and repercussions from expressing objection. Even though they don't agree, they don't want to raise their voice up. They would rather just keep it quiet and try to keep it out the best they can, but it's becoming so ingrained into everything. So certain aspects of this curriculum has slipped into, say, English or literature or other or, or social studies. One teacher who began his retirement four years ago recounted the drastic change in content. It was taught more from a traditional perspective, and they tried to respect the fact that there were parents and that parents made those types of decisions. But now they're just stepping out and uh, teaching things that are aberrations of what the culture believes. DePriest says the bill is a wake-up call. Uh, 2020 changed things astronomically in this country, and a lot of people are just now beginning to open their eyes and see uh, the changes uh, that's coming at us at light speed, and that we have to stand up if, if we want our voices to be heard. Senate Bill 818 has arrived at Governor Pritzker's desk and soon may be state law in Illinois. What are Chinese people's reactions to the Chinese Communist Party's celebrations on Thursday? Many say the event gave them chills. Standing at the gate of Tiananmen and dressed in a Mao suit, Chinese Communist Party or CCP leader Xi Jinping pumped a fist into the air and 70,000 spectators in Tiananmen Square clapped and waved CCP flags in unison. Chinese 
It was the CCP's centennial celebrations on Thursday, but not everyone in China seemed impressed. It's hard to tell if this is China or North Korea. If things really get to that point, the future must be in a dark abyss. Beijing resident Mr. Mao also says he feels that China has returned to the Cultural Revolution era and become a large-sized version of North Korea. He adds that despite having so many red flags waving in the air, the celebrations didn't feel joyful. That's because none of the top CCP officials had a happy face, and Chinese democracy activist Dong Guangping also felt the same. This kind of behavior only shows that these people are irrational and do not think independently. They worship this kind of uniformed public spectacle. On the same day, representatives from the Communist Youth League also delivered a presentation. They said, I offer my youth to the party. The scene sent chills down the spine of a Beijing magazine journalist called Song Shiting. She posted on Chinese social media Weibo, the way the girls were lined up and filled with pride, competing to be sacrificed. It's such a horror movie. Just a few seconds. I can see my hair standing on end. China's state-backed internet commenters and other users immediately attacked Song for the post, and her Weibo account has also since disappeared. The magazine she works for didn't respond to this incident. And Dong also seemed to share Song's view. The young people and the students in China are like wood and robots. The CCP has dumbed down the Chinese people for decades and kept them away from Western ideas. These students are also victims. Dong says the CCP's celebrations reminded him of Nazi Germany's large propaganda events. And he adds that it's real horror seeing Chinese people being brainwashed by the CCP and not knowing what's right. Is Beijing going to take over Taiwan by force within this decade? A number of top admirals in the U.S. Navy are saying Beijing could attempt it. But they also say it's the duty of the U.S. Navy to prevent it. NTD's Don Ma has more. Top military leaders within the U.S. could be forming a consensus. That is, Beijing's plans for a military takeover of Taiwan are a reality. The newly appointed commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, Admiral Sam Paparo, commented on the issue recently. And he agrees with former commander of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Philip Davidson. Here's what Davidson previously said. Taiwan is clearly um, one of their ambitions before then. And I think the threat is manifest during this decade, in fact, in the next six years. Paparo says he completely agrees with Davidson's statement. He adds that China is a pacing threat and he is worried about their ambitions. On the 100th anniversary of the CCP, party leader Xi Jinping made it abundantly clear that, quote, China's complete reunification with Taiwan is a historic mission and an unshakable commitment of the Communist Party of China. But Paparo assures that whether the Chinese takeover is tomorrow, next year, or whether it's in six years, it is the duty of the U.S. Navy to thwart any effort on the part of the Chinese to append that world order to include the unification by force of Taiwan to the People's Republic of China. The U.S. Pacific Fleet is part of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. It boasts around 200 warships and 2,000 aircrafts. Don Ma, NTD News. American soldiers in Afghanistan are packing up. Reports say their largest military base is now empty. NTD's Miguel Moreno has that story. It's been 20 years since American forces invaded Afghanistan in retaliation to al-Qaeda's 9-11 attacks. U.S. troops have been gradually pulled out. Multiple reports say Bagram Airfield, the largest American military air base, is now empty. President Biden says they left on schedule. We're on track exactly as to where we expect it to be. By September, he says the forces will be completely withdrawn from Afghanistan and that the Afghan government has the situation under control. I think they have the capacity to be able to sustain the government. They're going to have to be down the road, more negotiations, I suspect. Reports speculate that the Central Asian government could fall without U.S. troops to back them up because the war-waging Taliban is capturing some districts. We couldn't confirm how many of these districts they're taking over or how large these districts are. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. The U.S. Labor Department just released the June jobs report. More than 800,000 jobs were gained in the month, but the unemployment rate also went up. 
The Labor Department announced on Friday that the economy added 850,000 jobs last month, beating the estimate of 706,000. The unemployment rate, however, also rose to 5.9 percent from 5.8 percent in May. President Biden made positive remarks on the report. We're on the right track. Our plan is working. <laughs> We're not going to let up now. But economists say that the report should not be treated as entirely positive. This has been a very strange report because there are total inconsistencies between the household survey and the payroll survey. The employment survey, uh, which was up uh, substantially, um, you know, is telling you that there's a more robust labor market with a household based survey uh, is telling you that the labor market's not as robust. And as of June, the U.S. economy was still short 6.8 million jobs compared to February 2020. Labor force participation rate remained at 61.6 percent and hasn't improved since August of 2020. All this reminds me that there's further work to do with healing the economy and getting more people back to work with still more than 9 million Americans unemployed. 26 days have ended expanded unemployment benefit programs due to severe labor shortages. Navigating a world of economic madness, you need to have the right guide. What do today's decisions mean for your tomorrow? We ask why, what's the alternative? Uncover the deeper reasons and the hidden influences and highlight the real opportunities for profit. At Entity Business, we connect the dots for you. Good evening, thanks for joining us.